Finally, I'm going to show you how you can get from an estimated BGBB model uh, plus the underlying data that shows every week the AOV and convert that into an estimate of CLV uh, making certain assumptions about CAC, contribution margin, and discount rate. So uh, recall from the previous video that we just estimated this BGBB and what it gives us are the parameters that lead to the best correspondence between the expected and actual tracking plots. And the great thing is we can then use this fitted model to project out much further than just the range of our data. So again, our data goes out to week number 77. But we can get projections out as far as we would like. And so over here we see projections out to week number 260. Why 260? Well, if we wanted to project out for five years, five years is 260 periods, 260 weeks. So I'm just going to stick with that for now. So 260 weeks of projections for repeat purchases. Again, the next thing we need to know is we need to know how much spend is associated with each of those purchases. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another tab. I'm going to call it AOV. And I'm going to take this data over here copy it, paste it in, and then I'm just going to look at just what I need. So I'm going to look at the AOV data for each of these dates. And while I would normally want to run a model like uh, the Gamma Gamma model or some variant of it, um, yeah, that would require a lot of additional work. And so as a first step, one thing we could do is we could simply model average order value over time uh, via linear regression. So what I'm going to do that is I'm going to first get the, the week number associated with this data. That's week number 0, week number 1. Carry this all the way down. And then I am going to just run a regression in the usual way. So I just go to regression, click OK. My Y values are over here. And my X values over here. I am going to put this data, these results over here. That's my regression results. Again, I'm just going to replace this with a week number. And then I can get the expected AOV. And the expected AOV is intercept plus week number multiplied by coefficient associated with the week number. Take this, copy and paste it down. And now let's just look and see. If we highlight all this data and pull in a line chart, you can see AOV expected versus actual. And again, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of trend here. It's pretty much an intercept term. But again, now what we can do is we can take this and keep it going. So let's just project this out our same 260 weeks. Take it out till here. And I am then going to copy and paste my formula even further down. So I'm going to go to column E, park a little one over here, so I can grab this formula and just paste it down till here. I got my projections for AOV and I got my projections for repeat purchases, so I'm going to create another tab to bring it all together. So for CLV, let's give ourselves the week, let's give ourselves the week number, and then what we need are purchases per cohort member. We need AOV. I'm just going to put multiply. Multiply those two things together, we get revenue per cohort member. And then if we multiply this by the contribution margin, that's going to get us to contribution profit per cohort member. And then if I had the right discount factors, then that'll get me to the present value of those contribution profits.
And if I sum them up, I get the net present value. So I'm just going to copy and paste this over here, net present value. Obviously, to get the present values, I need a discount rate. I believe we think of them in annual terms, and so we're then going to convert that into a weekly discount rate. So let's just start filling this in. So yeah, net present value contribution per cohort member. This is our definition of post-acquisition value. We then subtract off CAC. That gets us to CLV. And then once we got CLV, then CLV to CAC is marketing return on investment. All right, so the week and the week number. We have those over here. So we've got the, the week going out for the first 77 weeks. But if I just have this kind of continue on in its usual pattern and just copy and paste that down, then I get everything else. So I want to get all this data, but I want to get it going left to right, not top to bottom. And so again, I want to use the transpose function. That really helps. Uh, but I can only use the transpose function if these things are hard coded. So I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to special paste the values to hard code. Now that I got them hard coded, I can take these, highlight, copy, go to the CLV tab, and put them in over here. Let's just make these a little bit easier of a date format. Format cells, number, let's use these. All right, purchases per cohort member. Well, in week number one, we know everyone has to make a purchase. That's the definition of a cohort. So I'm going to put the 100 in over here. For the repeat purchases, I go back over here. Now there's the question, what do we put in these entries? And the technically correct way to do it, if we want to be absolutely precise, we would want to put in the actual data when we have it and the expected data when we don't. And so we have the actual observed repeat purchase per cohort member for the first 77 weeks. So we might as well use that. So I'm going to take the actual data over here, copy, and paste it in over here. Now again, this is giving us just the data for the first 77 weeks. Now, starting week 78, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't actually observe that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here, and we're going to get our, expect, our expected values So from this column in weeks 78 and beyond. So go over here, copy, CLV, and I'm going to paste special values. I then highlight all of this percentage out of decimal. And then if I multiply this by this, whoops, I need to get AOV first. <laughs> All right, so let's get the AOVs. We have them right over here. They are right over here. And again, I want to have them going left to right, not top to bottom. So copy, hard code, copy, Come over here, transpose. Now that's going out the first 260 weeks, but again, like we did for uh, the BGBB, we're then going to take the actuals for the first 77 weeks. So I'm just going to copy that, go back over to the CLV tab, and transpose it over here. Then we multiply this by this. We are good to go. So I'm going to put the one over there, copy and paste this formula over. Next question is contribution margin. In my lecture, I go through how I get to this. But trust me, the contribution margin is something around 19%. I'll go 19.2%. So I then kind of take each of these revenue per cohort member figures and I multiply it by the contribution margin. 
And once again, I am going to take that formula all the way over. Now I need my discount factors. CD Now, back at that time, had only been around for four years. And its stock was volatile. It's losing a bunch of money. Bottom line, I'm going to assume that the that the the discount rate, the weighted average cost of capital is about 15%. So if the annual discount rate is 15%, then the weekly discount rate is equal to 1 plus the annual discount rate to the 1 over 52 minus 1. Now that I got that, I can get my discount factors. 1 over 1 plus discount rate raised to the power of the week number. So I guess technically I want to call this the week number. This is the week. All right, now I've got that. Again, I'm going to copy and paste this over. Present value of the contribution profit is just the contribution profit undiscounted times the discount factor. Copy and paste that over. Net present value is just the sum of all of the present values. What's CAC? <clears throat> well, if you look at the data, CAC in the first nine months of 1997 for CD Now was about 32 bucks. I'm going to put in 32 for now. And so if I do that, we end up with a CLV of uh, 2.64, which equates to a marketing return on investment of about 8%. That's a pretty low return. So soup to nuts, again, you've seen the full process that we've gone through to go from a BGBB to CLV estimates. And I'd say the key things that we need to get are we need those repeat purchase forecasts, we need the AOV data, the AOV forecasts, we need a contribution margin, a discount rate, and a CAC. And if we do that, then we can get to CLV. The only other thing that I'd recommend that you do is to make sure that uh, you kind of properly account for what we know versus what we need to predict. And what we know in this case is all the data up to week number 77. So we're going to use the actuals for that, and then we're going to use prediction, our prediction model for uh, weeks 78 onwards. And that's all there is to it.